Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'd like to present you today some cool new features that are in Blender since our last official version and that are showing up in the newest Blender, the 2.70 Blender, um, that we will release in four weeks, three or four weeks from now on. So let's start with the first one. To understand what has changed here, we first have to look at an animation in the 2.69 version. And that, it's, uh, that, uh, that animation here is some ident I'd like to create for my Blender developer rocket science series. And there is a small rocket flying across the screen like this. And those clouds that are emitted from the particle emitter here should be distributed evenly. But when you um, play back the animation, then you see, okay, this one, this one, all those clouds here are emitted only on whole frames. So that's really uh, strange because I thought that we got subframe supports uh, in the particle system. and. Uh, indeed, we we had subframe support, but when you parent a particle system to an empty, then we didn't have uh, subframe support. So, as you see here, it's only emitted on full frames like this. And I reported that to Lucas Turner, and he was so kind to fix that behavior. So in the new version the 2.69.10, that is the current development version. Um, the animation is looking like this. And there you see we got um, clouds emitted even on subframes, so the uh, gaps between them are not that big. And that is really a big help for all uh, guys that are doing particle animations and um, that are parenting their objects to empties and um, all those empties that are flying really fast um, and, and the particles thereof too then um, it's, it's really a big big help to have subframe support so this is a really welcome fix from you Lucas thanks very much for that the next thing I'd like to show you is uh, fairly new one um, and where can I see that the best let's look at the mapping nodes um, in the cycles render engine we got our node our node um, editor and there is a mapping node here where is it let's search for it mapping there it is so um, that's the first surprise. Sebastian König did a reorganization of those panels. So we got the standard, uh, standard layout now, location X, Y, Z, just as we have them in the object tab and the transform panel here. And the second thing is we are now able to alter several values at the same time. We uh, have to do a L-shaped uh, track with our mouse now. So uh, hit the left mouse button on this one, drag down to this value, and then uh, move your mouse to the right or to the left side. So let me just demonstrate it. I'm clicking now, then I'm dragging, and now I'm dragging to the left and to the right. And so we can um, alter several values at the same time and that saves much of time especially when you are uh, when you are having uh, many many values that you are changing like the y and x or the the um, z and, and y value at the same time and the offset gets preserved as, as you uh, see here so that's really a, a very cool feature too and that came in just today, I think, today or 
uh, yesterday. So we are brand new now. <laughs> but there are much more user interface uh, tweaks. So first of all, when you right click on a menu now, then you got a real right click menu. And there you can say, okay, I'd like to uh, flip the header to the top to collapse the menus or to maximize the area. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you are um, selecting a color and you're holding control while selecting it, then you are um, snapping on primary colors like this and moving your mouse up and down uh, increases or decreases the color value. So that is very cool too and helpful. And um, what was changed to? I think we got a new color picker button. So when you are hovering over the uh, color field here and you're pressing E, then the um, uh, color picker is activated and then you can pick, for example, this color just as you would if you uh, would open it and click on this one. So E is the shortcut for that and that is really handy too. And if you are a friend of very minimalistic menus, then you would like the collapse menus, um, the collapse menus entry, because that will collapse the menu to uh, one single button. And when you click on it, then you have all those options that are normally located down there. And so this will unclutter your interface even more if you like to. Apart from that, the MCE, the Movie Clip Editor, got a new uh, tabs interface. So we have here in the motion tracking field, let me just uh, load a footage, something like this one. Um, there we got new tabs that are task oriented. So we got a track tab where we find all operations that will help us to track the current fo footage. And we got a solve panel, a solve uh, tab that will um, help us to solve, to actually solve the, t the track and um, create some plain tracking stuff. So this is task oriented and I think that Blender will move in the future to this task oriented design uh, on other areas too. But uh, let's first start with some areas and the MCE um, reorganization was done by Sebastian König too. And when we are in the MCE editor, uh, in the movie clip editor editor, no, in the movie clip editor, <laughs> then uh, I can show you another feature that was added quite recently. And that is the feature of the weighted tracks. So if we got a, um, if we got a feature there, so let's track this point. And um, we, we know that this feature what uh, will leave the the frame after certain certain a uh, certain amount of frames frames. Then we could weight this feature, and with this weight value here you could define that this feature has um, uh, less overall influence to the uh, overall solution later on. So when you, are, you, when you have a feature that is leaving the, um, the frame for a second or, or uh, longer, then it's most of the time very problematic because the, the camera is jumping, the soft cam camera is later on jumping when it leaves the frame. And when you are able to weight a track, then you can um, reduce the influence of the problematic feature right, quite right before it's leaving the frame. And then it's very cool to um, and very easy to uh, make this jump less ob obvious or to, um, to hinder it from jumping uh, completely. So that is a really cool feature too. And that was implemented as always 
from our great Sergei that is um, caring so much for the MCE. So thanks Sergei for that. And uh, the next thing is, I think that we got a new, um, a new feature detection library in there, the Harris feature detection library. Previously, we were using the FAST that was, as the name implies, very fast, but not that accurate. And we are now using the Harris feature detection library that is um, a little bit slower but more accurate. So your drag should improve even more. Um, and the next thing Saga should implement is the um, one button tracks all and source it all solution because it's already that cool and that, uh, that good, the Blender Tracker. So I wouldn't think of anything that we could improve there. Um, but really, really thanks Sage and great work as always. The next thing I'd like to show you is the new navigation mode that's, that has been added by Dalai Felinto. And therefore I have to switch to the 3D view. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with the normal fly mode that we got in Blender in several releases already, um, but let me show you how this is working, the normal fly navigation mode. When you activate the fly navigation mode, then you can uh, turn around and look around via the mouse. So you are looking in some direction, you are dragging your mouse in some direction and then you're looking at that direction. If you'd like to uh, move forward or backward, then you would just uh, scroll your mouse wheel and you would automatically alter your view. That is the uh, fly navigation mode and that is really handy if you'd like to, um, to come to, to do some animations from a, from a far perspective and you would fly into a near perspective. But I found it not very accurate, accurate to uh, place your camera in the scene. And Dalai implemented now a really cool new navigation mode that is activated by Shift and F. And this navigation mode is more or less uh, similar to the first person view or first person uh, navigation mode that you are using when you are gaming. So you are navigating via W, A, S and D. W is moving forward, S is moving backward, D and A are striving the view. So um, moving the view to the left and the right. And when you are moving your mouse, then you are immediately, immediately um, setting or, or um, moving your view. So when you are familiar with this navigation, then it's really, really easy to move around in the scene and to place your camera. So my colleagues are really amazed at that mode and I'm personally using it, using it very often in my studio. So thanks very much, Delay. That is a really cool, cool mode. And I think there is some special key too. Uh, when you are clicking your middle mouse button, then you are jumping to the um, clicked object, I think. Yeah, then you are jumping to this face or to this object. So that is really handy. Thanks a lot, Dalai. And that was the um, first person view navigation mode. How is it called here? View navigation walk navigation. Okay, that was the walk navigation mode. And I think that was everything I'd like to show you in this episode. I hope that you are as amazed as I am when you are thinking of the new release and that you can't await it. It's happening in four weeks, so keep counting. Um, I hope that you uh, learned something from this episode, that you enjoyed it, that you um, um, are subscribing on YouTube, on Twitter or on Google Plus and that you keep on blending because Blender is just awesome and so I see you next time. Bye! <laughs>